This is some nodding. Ah! And over the next 100 days, I'm going to conquer this ocean and cause as much chaos as possible. Leviathan genocide, unethical business practices, unlicensed construction of space traveling vehicles. We'll be doing all of these and hopefully escape by the end. Anyways, let's get right into the shenanigans. I begin my journey like every great story should, stealing a life pod from a family of four to escape imminent death. Don't worry though, they should be fine. After waking up, I start harvesting resources to make all the basic equipment of the game. It's super important that we get set up early on since we're surrounded by many dangerously horrifying sea creatures that will not hesitate to turn my feral Filipino ass into a steaming hunk of shit. And once I had all my tools, I went out to build my very first base in the playthrough. I say first since I plan on building a base in every single biome, each with their own mini ecosystem and malicious purpose. But for now, this base will serve all of our basic needs like crafting, nutrition, and hoarding my massive wealth. Now, in order to progress further, I'll need to find blueprints for new modules and build them in the base. But I'm bored, so let's go have some fun. I built a mobile vehicle bay, which gives me the power of robot child slaves, and I used them to build a sea moth, allowing me to travel to the Aurora and check up on that family of four that is totally still alive. But as I got to the ship, I noticed that the area was infested with carnivorous eyeball spiders that probably ate the remains of the poor family. However, with my newly crafted propulsion cannon, I was able to peacefully relocate them. Yes. As I explored inside, I managed to find new blueprints, sexy posters, and made a new friend. I decided to return its display of love the same way my father does. But while I was here, I started getting tummy aches due to the radiation leaks. Realizing that this could kill all the surrounding wildlife, I quickly went around patching up holes to ensure that I would have plenty of entities to terrorize in the future. On my way out, I collected free loot from all my dead co-workers and scoured the surrounding area for more blueprint parts. Drop it, you peppermint colored bastard! Once I got my Seamoth back, I left the area and began exploring this forest of mushroom trees, which was packed with salt deposits. Unable to control myself, I pulled out my propulsion cannon and began assaulting nearby fish. Get it? Because, uh, I'm using salt to, uh, laugh. Now that I found more blueprints, it was time to expand the main base. First, I built a moon pool so that I could park and charge vehicles. Then inside the moon pool, I built the vehicle upgrade console, which allows me to upgrade my beautiful bubbly U-boat. I gave it storage compartments, a deeper dive depth, and a makeover. As you can see, I've given it the color scheme of an ocelot so that I could finally feel what it's like to be inside of one. And with all of that done, I felt like it was time to do some more exploring. While I was on the Aurora, I ended up finding the blueprint for a Team Moon mech suit, which sounds like a great find, but without any upgrades, all you can really do is walk around and punch the shit out of anything that moves. I already do this on a daily basis, so it doesn't seem like something I really want to build straight away. Not until I get some of the useful upgrades for it first. So that's what I began searching for, which led me to this biome of floating rocks infected with herpes. But on top of one of these STD riddled stones, I found a ship wreckage that contained the blueprints I was looking for, which means all we need now are the resources to build them. However, this is where I ran into a huge issue. My Seamoth doesn't have enough space for resource hauling on the scale that I need. And since our projects will only get bigger and bolder from here, it's best that we fix this issue right now. So I went back and forced my robot children to build me a Cyclops. Despite moving at the pace of a crippled snail, this vessel saves a lot of time by hauling large loads of loot. While the robot children work on buffing out the handsome dent I made in the hull, I began exploring this biome of floating blue balls. This is where I found an abandoned base that had a weird looking bouncy ball and the blueprint for the alien containment unit. This will allow me to recreate ecosystems by kidnapping fish and shoving them in the lifeless tank. But as I tried to leave, I found a ball sack spider chewing on my beloved sea moth. Feeling vengeful, I decided the most fair form of revenge was to chew on something that they love. But I'm too lazy for that, so I just killed it instead. I gathered more resources and made my way to the Jelly Shroom Caves to begin building my second base. Since this area has a lot of open lava pockets, I decided the most efficient way to power this base is by using thermal energy. <laughs> So on top of using thermal energy, I made a crab snake fuck pit where I'll be using their children to fuel extra bioreactors that I've made inside the base. Over the next two days, I built bases in the safe shallows and kelp forests, but soon after ran into a huge issue. I was getting very, very bored. So I decided to do some exploring where I found myself in this creepy forest of pale tendrils and period clots. Here I found the eyeball spiders that I safely relocated earlier, except they seem a little more scarier now. But that's okay, because I could just relocate them once once again, wait, wait, where did they go? While I was here, I entered a nearby cave where I found myself in a valley of expired Mountain Dew. I harvested the native resources of the area, but was confronted by the translucent danger tube. Thinking fast, I chucked some spiders at it and left the area to continue colonizing the ocean. Stop! 
Stop interrupting me! As I was saying, it was time to expand my empire, and the next place I want to colonize is that creepy blood kelp zone. Now, an interesting problem I face here is having a reliable source of power. You see, this biome gets as much sunlight as I do when working on these perfectly crafted, highly entertaining videos that you guys appreciate so much. But due to the minimal sunlight, solar panels are out of the question. Thermal vents didn't seem very common, and I didn't want to lazily slap another bioreactor inside of this one, which left me with one option. Nuclear energy. Although it is one of the most expensive power sources in the game, it complements this biome very well since I can easily find uranium here. And with the blood kelp bungalow completed, there's only one thing I need to take care of to make this biome feel more like home. Eliminating all the hostile creatures that threaten my colonization. Uh, oh. Are you running? But now I have this raging bloodlust bubbling inside of me. So I went back home to my cute little bouncy ball I hatched and prepared to release my anger. I'm kidding. Even though this ugly tentacle fish can withstand the damage of three abusive households, I would rather use my energy for something more productive, like killing the ghost leviathan's brother. With this leviathan dead, I began gathering materials to finally build my prawn suit. You know, the thing I wanted to build a couple days ago but forgot because I have the attention span of a goldfish swimming in liquid cocaine. And once the suit was crafted and the upgrades installed, I was able to swiftly traverse the ocean, survive even deeper depths, and use the drill arm to harvest large quantities of resources. God, this sucks. Then over the next couple of days, I built a base in the Grand Reef, traveled to the deep ashy depths to harvest copper, silver, and kyanite, then returned to the crash zone to stockpile on as much titanium as I could. After I put the Reaper to sleep, I decided to let off some steam by taking a stroll through the Lost River. While I was here, I found some sort of dissection facility with a bunch of open alien carcasses. And after playing with the remains like a wad of Play-Doh, I left the area before anything bad could happen. Well, now I have space gonorrhea. So at this point, I realized that none of my bases had any real purpose, except for the jelly shroom crab snake dungeon. But that got me thinking, why am I shoving their kids inside bioreactors? I mean, obviously to power the base and to punish them, but for what purpose? And that's when I got the brilliant idea to turn this pit of misery into a bigger pit of misery that powers a water filtering factory. It took five whole days to finish my OSHA violation operation, but now I have a steady source of water that I can stockpile for weeks at a time. Next, I wanted to have a base to charge large amounts of power cells and batteries, since I burned through power sources like lava burns through an infant child. Now, none of our current bases are large enough for all the modules I need to install, so I built a new base in the bulb zone. Since these chargers demand a lot of energy to function, we're gonna need to power this base using nuclear energy. And between gathering resources and building the modules, I managed to finish the project in six days, cause holy guacamole, power cell chargers are very, very expensive. You know what's not expensive? G Fuel when you use code MONO. While I deal with this issue, let me tell you why you should drink G Fuel. It tastes good. It's filled with vitamins. Your dad will come back. It'll energize you. Your crush will kill her boyfriend and start dating you. And you can get 20% off using code MONO. Do it now or you'll end up like this Reaper Leviathan. I made my way back to the crash zone to build another base. I decided to use this one as a storage unit for titanium, which might sound weird, but trust me. So far, I've used more titanium in this video than I've had sex with your mother. After that was done, I spent the day going base to base harvesting all the wonderful fruits of their labor. Then I traveled to the deep depths to explore the lava zone. I wanted to build another base here, but there's also a secret base at the center of this rock formation. And inside the base, I found some Minecraft emerald blocks and a blue weeaboo tablet. Since these resources might be super important, I went back to the Cyclops to depot them. Once Hentai Godzilla was gone, I began construction on my inactive lava zone base. Since it's obviously hot as fuck in this area, there is clearly only one power source fit for this biome. Nuclear energy, I'm kidding. Of course I powered this biome by making some thermal plants that I placed inside some open lava deposits. And what this base's purpose is, is to, uh, is, uh... Yeah, I'm running out of those really fast, so we'll come back to that later. Time for another base, this time in the mushroom forest. And the purpose for this one? Well, there's one blueprint that I've had for a while that I've completely neglected like the 37 children in my basement, and that is the bed blueprint. So I made some beds in the mushroom motel, and I finally decided to get a good night's rest.
Nope, never again. Now, all of our bases so far have been built underwater. So to switch it up, I went out and built some bases on the surface, starting with the mountain biome. This area has a great view of the ocean and this blocky penis-shaped building. So I decided to make this base my main office. Why do I need an office? Not only do I need to keep up with all my businesses, but we're eventually going to receive some complaints, fines, and court cases due to the amount of crimes we're committing. And once I set up a spot to store those cases and claims, I went to build another base. This area is packed with alien produce that is super easy to grow, making them super profitable. Although these fruits and vegetables aren't FDA approved, they already know that crossing me will result in an immediate decline in blood-related relatives. So they shouldn't stop us from selling to the public. Now back to base building underwater. Shoo, shoo, I say. So I ended up building another base in this leveled up biome, which was home to these harmless three-legged creatures that shit everywhere. I had a funny idea of using this base as a giant septic tank, but no, the game doesn't want me to have fun anymore. So I decided to kill everything in the surrounding area. But once I was done with my quirky little task, I felt something wrong deep in my soul. A feeling that what I did was not the best thing to do and that I should have done something better. The feeling of boredom. So I went to the safe shallows and collected these shit sacks from these acne manatee looking things. You see, these gas pods deal a lot of damage really fast. So fast that with enough of them, you can kill about any creature in the game. Even perhaps a giant fire breathing octo alligator. And so I went to the bottom of the lava zone to recreate one of the most horrible war crimes known in history. Help! Help! I can't breathe! Yeah! And with that threat gone, I began exploring the facility that happened to be in the area. Inside were some weird alien relics and this cool looking robotic spider crab. These guys seemed pretty harmless, so I decided to leave them alone. <laughs> Enjoy the heat, you little shit! At the very end of the base, I found a giant pool that was home to this curvy, beaked up squid mama leviathan. Using her telepathy, she told me that she could heal my space aids if I tend to her eggs. And being the absolute Rizalanti I am, I got straight to work. After hatching her eggs, I used the sparkly Elmer's glue that she produced to clean off my alien STDs. But I couldn't waste any time. You see, to avoid paying child support, I need to leave the planet immediately. So I began building a rocket to return to my homeland. For those of you that don't don't know, this rocket is one of the most expensive projects in the game, requiring over 100 raw materials to complete construction. And after taking 7 whole days to complete it, I started up all the basic systems, but realized something horrible. There isn't enough space to bring my massive amounts of wealth with me. But that's okay, because I simply just took a couple of days or so to make 6 more rockets. And once I loaded them all up with gold, I found that I couldn't start any of the ships for some reason. Not knowing what to do, I folded and contacted tech support. and they swiftly came to the rescue. So unless I want to blow up like a woman who was told to calm down, I need to shut off the building. I opened up the facility, explored around, found this destiny ghost looking thing that turned out to be a goddamn doomsday device, and pressed the button. After giving me an injection of space heroin, the facility turned off and I rushed back to the ship. As I climbed up my rocket, I took one last good look at the planet whose ecosystem I've completely ruined and finally began the launch sequence of my ship, leaving this planet on day 100. Ah! Oh, uh, huh? What the fuck? If you enjoyed the video, you should watch this one where I hatch all the eggs for the first time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you once I figure out what I need to do. Have a good day.